Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Brandon Mahoney. He is the co-founder of LaunchPoint Labs. They are a startup studio and early venture funds where he is an expert in creating sales departments. He is currently based in Oregon. I have Michael Davis. He's the founder of Speaking CPR, where he helps business leaders and speakers improve their presentations and speeches. And I have Gary Fredericks. He is the CEO of On Point Partners, where they provide back office services for small businesses. The question today, what does it mean to feel engaged at work? Michael, kick us off. Such a relevant question. Love it because engaged means for me being totally focused on the task at hand. This device, the old phone, is not calling out to me, or if it is, I'm ignoring it. When I'm working on speeches, stories, or just communication issues for clients or my own material, I find it very easy to be engaged. However, when it's a task I dislike, such as research, which is not my favorite, it's easy to be disengaged. When I know the, the, the activity is something I enjoy and I can get in flow, it's easy to be engaged. Otherwise, I'm very distractible. I don't think I ever truly appreciated what it meant to be engaged. I always felt there was just like, oh yeah, I'm working, I'm engaged. But in reality, I wasn't. And I didn't appreciate it until I was I was reading a book. And I noticed that as I was reading the book, I was also taking notes and time just seemed to fly by. And it was all I was focused on was I wanted to extract as much knowledge as I could. I've experienced true engagement within work while working within an office, but working at home by myself in my own space. I find myself getting way more engaged in work and just true focus on what it is that I have going on. I think uh, you can't be engaged unless you are motivated. You have to believe what you're doing. Obviously, I'm engaged at On Point Partners because I started the company and I, I like what I do and I'm, I work constantly. Uh, like Brandon just said, time flies when, you, when you're doing something you really enjoy doing and that's when you're engaged. Hmm. So I feel like engagement is I care about the outcome. And I think that some people confuse engagement with happiness. I'm not always happy with what I'm doing. Some of the things that I do for my business, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. Am I still engaged? Yes, because I want to get it done. And I, and that's important to me, but I feel like, especially for people who have jobs, you hear a lot of employers talk about, we need engaged employees. I think that's really hard if they don't care about the outcome. I love that, that separation of happiness and engagement being different things. Uh, I'm doing a lot of manual input into my CRM that I'm building and I'm fully engaged with it. It's all I'm focused on, but it is not, it doesn't make me happy to do it. It's like a necessary step. Mm-hmm. Do you enjoy that work, Brandon? When you're working I enjoy on what it's going to cause for me, what it's going to, what I'm going to get out of it, but the actual manual process of going through LinkedIn, finding people to reach out to, manually entering their information into the CRM, not the most fun. So that ties into what Robin said about the outcome. Absolutely. It's all about outcomes for me. And I feel when I'm doing the work that I think is going to get me there, I'm very engaged. And I'm I'm not a detail-oriented person, but if I have to be, I'm going to do what I have to do. Yeah, it's an interesting take, the three of you have. I hadn't thought about the outcome part of it as much as the grind of the tasks. I once heard a success guru, whatever you want to call him, say, people have this mistaken belief about success, and that is that the most successful people love every part of the process. No, they don't. They hate those steps as much as we do, but they're so focused on that end result. And I'd forgotten that until the three of you brought it up. So I need to refocus my focus while I'm engaged with those day-to-day tasks. Yeah, I think it's a commitment more than than anything. I'm committed to be successful and I define success a certain way. And I know that there are things that I'm going to have to do that I don't like doing, but I'm going to do it because I need to do it. So I don't think happiness and engagement are necessarily synonymous with each other. Do you think you can create engagement? No, I don't think so. Well, in, do you mean in yourself or in others? Uh, yes, either. <laughs> <laughs> well, based on what the three of you have brought up about the end result, could, 
gets into an area that I'm very focused on now with my work is crystal clear communication. Mm. And what I see in most companies is that they're not clear about the outcome or they'll use a generic term like let's be successful, rah, rah, rah. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I think you create engagement when you have crystal clear communication about what does that term mean? They'll be much more engaged if they buy into that end result. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The buy-in is important. Back in the 80s, when I first started working in the world, the quality was the word everybody threw around. You have to be high quality. Well, what, what does that mean? And nobody ever explained it. It's just that's they had to have that word somewhere in the in the marketing they were doing. And otherwise they were afraid they weren't going to make money or be successful. So it's it's the same today. We have we make up words that we have to have in the conversation, but unless we have buy-in from our teams, they're not going to feel engaged. One way I like to kind of figure out well how what does engagement look like and how do we create it? Look at the opposite side of it and what creates disengagement. And I can tell you for me that what creates disengagement is if the work that I do doesn't matter. I also really need a leader who knows this is where we're going. This is the goal. This is what we're trying to accomplish. We don't necessarily have to know how to get there, but if we don't know where we're going and I just feel like we're in a morass of walking in circles, I'm going to be very disengaged and I'm going to tap out pretty quickly. What makes me think about, I'm a big fan of the uh, NFL National Football League here in the States. And Every team has the same objective every time they have the ball. Get it in the end zone. That's a pretty clear end, end result. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got these plays laid out, but the defense is going to throw different wrinkles at us. We have to adjust, but we're all committed to that same goal. We're going to score. If not, we're not. I would love to hear what kind of things create disengagement. Because if you can eliminate them, then you can create engagement. I think if you make your... Your goal is a secret or you're, you're not communicating with your staff. You're not uh, getting their input. They, they, they don't have a roadmap that says you are here and we need to go here and this is how we're going to do it. It's very hard to be engaged if, if you're, like you were saying, in a morass of people just kind of wandering around doing what they want. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just not being clear on why we're doing this. So are we, we saying that is engagement then understanding the goal and is it being willing to do the work? Like what is, there's something in there, like knowing the goal, but then actually getting engaged in the work. I don't know if I would say it's the willingness, at least not for me. It's the desire to do it. It's like, now I want to do it. Hmm. Like as I'm doing, as I'm building up my, my series, I'm building in all the context. This is something I, I had to do previously and I was doing it, but it wasn't as, as engaged, I would say, because I wasn't hundred percent confident that the people I were adding were the right people. Mm -hmm. And as I've spent time to better understand my ICP, now that I know that these are the right people that I can reach out to and have a good conversation with, I'm definitely, now I feel engaged because I have that confidence and now I want to do it, despite the fact that it's not the most fun thing in the world to do. So the work has purpose. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Robin, this reminds me of a story I've read last year about a gentleman named George Lowe. He was high up in NASA after President Kennedy had laid out the goal, we're going to land on the moon by the end of the decade. Now, there are 400,000 people involved in this project over the decade. And George Lowe had these three words that he constantly shared with everyone he encountered, man, moon, decade. Mm. Whenever there was a problem, he brought it back to, is it? addressing this end result and if it wasn't he said we're not doing it and that helped with this disengagement or engagement issue people were like okay we got to get back on track and i and think I, it takes a certain level of bravery to be willing to do that whether you're in a boardroom or a team meeting i am good for going what are we doing this is way let stop we're wasting our time and i, I feel like a lot of people aren't that bold so i think a lot of time gets wasted because people don't feel okay making that statement. We're not accomplishing anything. Just to go back to my, Michael's comment about NASA, I watched a video, uh, a documentary on about the Apollo project, and they were saying how it was the only time in the history of the work that they do that everybody knew what the goal was, where they were going, and if it didn't contribute to that, throw it away. 
You can't have engagement if you don't know where you're going. I think that that's the bottom line of what we're saying here. Mm -hmm. So that is our 10 minutes. I'm going to cut us off there. Thank you so much for being engaged in this conversation. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon. Thank you.